Lovely Julie, and welcome to I Read Books and Stuff. I'm House Jonah, and today I'm reviewing the book Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lane Taylor. This book was absolutely amazing, first of all. And I haven't really done a book review in a while, I think since Frostbite or Carrie. No, I haven't I haven't uploaded Carrie yet, but I will soon. But uh I think this is a great book to get back on that book reviewing bandwagon and not just book tags because it was absolutely fantastic. It's one of my new favorite books and I'll talk about that right now. But if you haven't read the book, I will give you a non-spoiler synopsis and like my five words. This book follows Karu, a, an artist in training. She always has these amazing sketchbooks of these monsters that she tells all her friends this amazing story, but little do they know that it's actually a real story, an enthralling story about how monsters raised her and they trade wishes for teeth. And it just, it builds up so much mystery, like what's the teeth for and why is it so urgent? It's just... Ooh, it's it's really 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 intense and I know that sounds kind of weird but she meets an angel and that basically just and then after she meets that angel everything just goes <laughs> everything just like everything just takes off whenever she meets the angel and the story just it just ah oh, the story is so amazing and I definitely recommend it if you like high fantasy if you're not really a fan of high fantasy then I said I don't I wouldn't read this because it's like it's the high fantasy it's like it's, it's there's it's creates a new world and, but if you like high fantasy or you're iffy about it i say definitely read it i say the only reason that you shouldn't read this if you if you hate high fantasy if you don't like it then read this but if you hate it don't don't read it but it's amazing it's an amazing amazing book for my five words i'm going to say brutally intense doesn't lighten up in the best way possible and I give this a 4.75 out of 5 and I know that's really specific but that's the perfect way to rate this book 4.75 oh, I'm a genius so if you haven't read this book I'm gonna say that you should go now just go leave us go away read it okay so let's just kick things off with the spoilery stuff by talking about that ending Oh my Jesus, that was just like, oh my When like, she found out that she was madrigal, that like, intense moment whenever they broke the wishbone, it was just like, oh, can you, it kept, it kept me flipping open the pages like, oh, oh, I need more, I need more, I need more. And then like, and then they fell into this backstory and I wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure how I felt about that backstory, but I know that I liked it a lot and I was just like, and then like, Whenever I was back there, I was like, oh, ah, oh god, no. And there's, there's so many feelings, so many feelings from that backstory. And it makes you, like, feel sad for Magigal. And it makes you hate characters. Uh, Chiro. Uh, I'm, not sure if I, I'm not sure if I said Chiro. Whenever I was reading it in my head, I kept on saying Cheerio. So. One of the reasons that I wasn't really, like, thrilled with the backstory. I mean, I really, really liked the backstory. But I kind of was like... Mm, because I really, really wanted to find out what happened to Karu and Akiva. I wanted to see how Magigal was like looking at her past lover, and but and like I was like, I I I kind of knew why Akiva thought that Magigal slash Karu would hate him. It's because he turned into a monster, and they, and he said at the beginning of the book, he said that he didn't want Magigal to see what he is now, because he was the monster. But that. I was incorrect, apparently, because that, uh, oh my god, the very last line of the book, I was just like, <gasps> and then like, it was over after the epilogue, which, which, uh, I was just like, oh, and, uh, uh, but, you, but more, I need more, I, I but, but, uh, but then like, I, I got the second book from my library, I haven't read it yet, I don't know why, but, I'm gonna, I'm reading one book, I forgot, it's Obsidian, I think it's called, by Jennifer L. Amitraff, and it's really good, but I, I, I don't know why, I just, I need a, I need a separation from this, from the series, I just need one book to clear my mind, I heard that book was like really almost contemporary, so I'm reading that, hopefully I'll like it, and I, I just need a break from that, I can't believe Akiva, I, I, I mean, I was, I was so, I was fighting with myself, I was like, do I still like Akiva, do I hate Akiva, do I, I, I was like, I was at a loss for words. 
I was just like, okay. I, after I finished the book, I sat myself down. And I was like, all right, do I hate Akiva or do I love Akiva? I couldn't decide. I just feel like Akiva could have, I'm gonna put this down now. I feel like Akiva could have just like asked her first. I mean, before he brutally committed genocide. Or maybe I'm just all wrong and they are already alive. But he just thought that they'd kill them. And he used, and Brimstone did the same way that, um, that Madrigal used Chiro's body and, ma and already made himself a known body, but they don't have any more teeth, do they? I don't think they have any more teeth because the portal's burned down. Or did they do that before that? Maybe they each create a new body for themselves just in case. That's my theory. I haven't read the second book, so don't tell me what happens. But I'm just, uh, I'm just, I was on the edge of my seat and it was just, uh, it was a great, great book. Let's talk about the characters now. Karu. Absolutely loved her. She could get kind of annoying sometimes, but really, just like, overall, she was just an amazing, amazing character. She was greatly developed. She had a great personality. You can tell the way that she was struggling, and you're like, oh, my baby. Speaking of struggling, we have Zuzanna, and Zuzanna was my favorite character in the whole thing, because she was, like, she was just awesome. Then, like, the Latin, like, the last fourth of the book she was just like not there and I was like no where is where is my Zuzi where where is she Susanna was so snarky and funny and just like you can tell that she was kind of like the comic relief but she was a great comic relief so I don't really care because she she was like my favorite character and if anything bad happens to her in the second book I'm I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be mad nothing's gonna harm you no while I'm around Let's talk about Akiva, because he was probably the most complicated character in this freaking story. Here is basically my reactions to him during the book. Huh? <gasps> no. No. <sighs> what? Oh, so cute stuff. Get married already. What? Wait, what? Oh. No, 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 pretty much. Casimir, just no. Brimstone, yeah. Issa, no, no. Yasri, yo. Twiga, not very well developed. I felt like this with Yasri too, but especially with Twiga. All we really know about Twiga is that he's a guy with a giraffe neck. We don't even know like if he has any other animal parts. Could have done better with that, Lanny Taylor. Plot structure. Absolutely fantastic. The pacing was just amazing. It had just enough time for people to catch on and adapt to the story and then it just it just like it's like whenever you get into a roller coaster, then they make sure that everybody's seat belt and and hassled in and then they just take off like and then it's it just it flows so smoothly and perfectly and it was the plot structure was probably my favorite part of the whole book besides Susanna. And the whole ending was just like it was swung so smoothly and like you had all these questions and they just like all came together like that and it was just like ah oh, ah oh, fantastic story so that's basically it for my daughter of smoke and bone review i think i feel like that was kind of short but I don't really make long reviews whenever all I have to say is good stuff, and it was an amazing, amazing book. So if you like high fantasy and you're still watching, even though I told you not to watch anymore, go read it. Bye!